Hey everyone, I'm Sean. We've got six security practices for you today, and we're gonna hit each one as fast as possible because I don't want to be bored. Number one, how to use your backup. Your backup is given to you when you first set up the wallet, but using it to recover a wallet can feel intimidating if you've never done it before. Let's say my Trezor device gets lost. Oh no, how do I access my funds? The answer is your backup. You can plug in a new Trezor device, begin the setup process, and when you get to the screen for creating a new wallet, select Recover Wallet instead. Now you enter your backup words. The newest standard is the 20 word, but we support 12 and 24 word standards too. All of them are valid. Once you have the words submitted, voila, you're back into the previous wallet. Number two, generate a fresh address for each transaction. Generating fresh addresses is usually done in the context of receiving Bitcoin. Once you've received Bitcoin to a public address once, future transactions associated with that address can be tracked. It's because of this that we recommend generating a new address for every transaction. There's nothing stopping you from reusing old addresses, which remain active indefinitely once they're created. The Trezor Suite app has a built-in option for this exact purpose, and they can be generated indefinitely as long as you're not leaving too many of them empty. Number three, discrete mode. Trezor Suite lets you use discrete mode to hide funds and other sensitive information about your account. Most people don't want their holdings known to the public, and we don't recommend flaunting it. So discrete mode is built into Trezor Suite to hide coin totals and other sensitive information from prying eyes. Number four, scams and phishing. Phishing is a big topic, but I'll sum up general advice with a few bullet points. Don't be lazy. Most fishers count on the fact that people won't inspect things too closely. Stay alert and make sure links and websites don't have strange typos or quirky behavior. Many fishers make emotional attacks. Red flags include trying to make you scared, panicky, or act with urgency. Stay educated. Phishing methods and scams change regularly, and knowledge is one of your best defenses. By the way, following us is a great way to do this. When it comes to crypto, Never volunteer your backup. We stress this all the time as general advice because your name, address, phone number, and many other things can be obtained from various sources on the internet. But no one can get your wallet back up on the internet if you follow our advice and store it offline. That is to say, on a paper wallet, or better yet, a Trezor Keep Metal. Trezor won't ever ask for your backup information either. So if that ever happens, you know it's not us. Number five. Pin protection on Trezor devices. This one's easy. Put a pin on your device. No pin means anyone with physical access to your device can plug it into a computer and do whatever they want with the funds. This is also an easy callback to don't be lazy. A pin code takes very little time to set up and dramatically increases the security of your device. There's also a lockout after a certain number of attempts, so your device can't be stolen and then brute forced. We recommend a minimum of four digits for a pin but you can go all the way up to 50. And finally, number six, passphrases in passphrase wallets. All right, this is the only long one. I lied when I said it would be all fast in the beginning, but it's interesting and I'll still speak quickly, so I don't apologize. To understand passphrases, you need to understand backups, which we covered at the beginning in case you skipped to this point in the video. A passphrase is pretty much what it sounds like, a phrase that gives you access to something. In this case, an entirely new wallet. What that means is you can either leave your standard wallet empty or with a small amount of funds while keeping the bulk of your holdings on a separate wallet that requires access to the standard plus a passphrase. And in case it's not clear, a passphrase should be a phrase and not a word. And there are two reasons for this. The first is the human brain. A phrase is much easier to remember than a random string of characters. And the second is for the computer. If someone steals your backup words, which gives access to your standard wallet, and then runs a programming script to try and guess random passphrases, then something like Sean is far easier to brute force than Sean is the best brand ambassador ever. To the computer, this phrase has no meaning, but the extended length makes it significantly harder to guess a brute force. Keep in mind that uppercase letters, lowercase letters, spaces, and special characters are all considered unique. So variety is your friend in terms of security, but you must remember your passphrase verbatim in order to access the correct wallet. If you choose to create a passphrase, just remember that it has one major caveat. If you create a wallet and then add a passphrase on top of that, which again, creates a totally separate and unique wallet, there is no recovering the passphrase wallet if you forget the phrase that you use to create it. No customer service representative can go into your account and find it, and we don't store the information anywhere. Which is also the entire point. 
It's a big step up in terms of security. What that means is that you are completely responsible for storing and retaining the passphrase you've chosen. Our general recommendation is to physically copy both your backup and your passphrase separately and then store them safely away from each other. A physical copy means you are not creating a digital copy. You should never store this information on a phone or computer. Our devices come packaged with ready-made paper wallets and you can get a Trezor Keep Metal if you want to protect against physical damage. If you choose to share your backup or passphrase with anyone, then keep in mind you're giving them open access to whatever is in the account. Anyone with these words can buy a hardware wallet, enter the words, and do anything they want with what's inside. So that's it. The best way to execute these tips is number one, put them into practice yourself. And number two, educate yourself in the world of cryptocurrency. There's a lot to learn, and it only gets more exciting the deeper you dive in. Talk to you in the next one.